I've been testing and using the new Surface Laptop 7 with Qualcomm's XLE chip for the past two weeks now, and I have to say that it is my favorite XLE laptop, and it's not perfect, but I love it. So I'm gonna tell you guys about the downsides as well as everything that surprised me and what you should do if you wanna buy one of these. Now, the first thing that I have to say, what really shocked me right when I started using it is how responsive it is. I have never felt a Windows computer be so snappy, just opening up programs, unzipping files, getting into the web browser. It is so quick, just like one of Apple's Apple Silicon MacBooks. And just like those Macs, I have to say that this is practically Windows alternative and they knocked it out of the park for the overall experience compared to previous Intel laptops and the previous Qualcomm versions that kind of sucked because of Windows running so terribly. Now I'll talk about performance in just a second and what kind of blew my mind with that, but let me talk about the overall experience because I did like the previous Surface laptops, but this takes it to a whole nother level. Just a few days ago, before I did my review, I had to get the Surface Laptop 6 that actually came out this year, but it included an Intel chip inside with the older body of the Surface laptops and having those side by side kind of blew my mind because if you're not familiar with those, well, this thing has been upgraded in so many different ways. The display had a huge upgrade, the bezels, the thickness, every single thing has gotten better. Um, let me start out with the keyboard. It feels fantastic. Large keys, great feedback. I really like it. And with that, we don't have a fingerprint scanner, but Windows Hello is so good to use. It catches you at a wide angle. I love it. And even though the trackpads were okay before they were diving board designs, they changed it to a magnetic one with perfectly even click, super responsive, very accurate. Outside of a MacBook, this is the best trackpad that you can get. It has a nice large size. It is awesome. I love that it got thinner, that it got lighter, and of course that you have a magnetic charger, once again making it be like a MacBook, uh, so that is great, and that they added another USB Type-C port, which is USB 4 on the left hand side. These are some awesome upgrades. And then talking about the speakers, which you cannot see here, well, they sound really good for a thin and light laptop, pretty much matching the M3 MacBook Air. Go ahead and take a listen. Now, while the higher end MacBooks do sound better, this is great for a Windows laptop. Now, before I tell you what really surprised me, I wanna share a free browser-based productivity app called Magical, our sponsor for today's video. Magical is a free productivity extension that uses AI to automate repetitive tasks, saving me seven hours of work every week. It automates data entry, messaging, and more by learning how you work. For example, Magical's automations feature can grab info from web pages and fill out into a spreadsheet or form, making data entry seamless. You you can use it for job applications, filing patient forms, updating your CRM, tracking marketing campaigns, and so much more. There is a use case for everyone. The templates feature lets you use shortcuts to quickly expand text. You can create templates for frequent emails, your email address, or shipping address to save time. Magical also has AI Reply, which can reply to entire emails in seconds. It's designed to save you time so you can enjoy things like watching tech videos. 
Check out Magical to boost your productivity and save tons of time. It is completely free. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below. Now back to the video. Yeah, the 1080p webcam is pretty nice. It actually has a really wide angle view. The sharpness isn't that high, but there's very little noise. And what surprised me the most about it is that it does a great job focusing in on my voice and rejecting background sounds. We have a loud HVAC system here, so we always denoise our audio. I have an ice machine running in the background, and right now, you are just hearing my voice. The mics do a great job. Now getting into the display, it is also really nice for a Windows laptop and that really got to me when I looked at the Surface Laptop 6, which is the same as the previous ones. It is so much brighter. The viewing angles are so much better. And at 600 nits when you're watching HDR, the brights really pop. It looks really good. Now there is one issue with it and it's the fact that the screen is pretty reflective. So when you compare it to a Mac, even one that has a lower brightness like the M1 that you could buy for 699, the contrast looks quite a bit better on those. And I think one reason why is the fact that it has a touch screen. You have to have that touch layer on top and that hurts it. So if you like to touch your display, well, that's a benefit. But if you're not gonna do that like I don't do, you know, you get a lot of that reflect now, another major positive is that this is a 120 hertz screen and it is dynamic. So it goes all the way down to 24 hertz to save battery life, it can match your content. I mean, this is a nice screen overall. And that gets me into battery life. This is one of the biggest things we were waiting for with the X Elite chip to get much better battery life than the Intel systems. Now, even though online they did say that it beats out MacBooks, um, if you're just playing back video, it does. But when you're actually using it day to day, doing some productivity tasks, it doesn't really match up in real world use. Now in our tests, it had 32% left after we ran all of them while the M3 Air had 50%. So I would say even this is more than enough for most people. You'll go through a full day without issues. And um, the killer part is that you don't actually take a massive performance hit when you're on battery like we had with older systems. And with those older Intel systems, the battery life was not great. So when we compared them, the Surface Laptop 6 actually ended up dying before we finished our test, while the X Elite version actually had 40% battery remaining. So that's around 67% better at battery life. And with that, one thing I noticed was a massive difference in fan noise. The Intel system would crank up its fans. Sometimes when you're just opening up the web browser or installing something, just basic tasks where this stays silent like a MacBook and even under full load, it is not very loud. So once again, this is the MacBook of Windows laptops and that is a great thing. And now let's go ahead and get into performance because here it also did pretty good. This is not the highest SKU of um, the X Elite. We actually did a different comparison, but one thing where it stands out compared to the other systems we've tested is on battery, the performance is pretty much the same. And it could beat out some other systems where, you may, where the manufacturer decides to throttle it down just for better battery life. And I am so happy that they did this. I'm also happy that the SSDs are really fast. They're actually faster than the M3 MacBook Airs. And the cool thing is, the SSD is actually replaceable in here, unlike a MacBook. So for 80 bucks, you can pick up a one terabyte SSD or for 140 bucks, a two terabyte. And that gives you a killer value if you're willing to open up the four little screws and replace it yourself, which is really easy to do. Now looking at the X Elite performance, it does a good job in single core performance. It doesn't beat out the M3, yet alone the M4, but it is good and that's why it is so snappy. And then looking at multi-core score, the performance is 
killer, at least in Geekbench 6. It beats out more expensive MacBooks on battery power, and that is excellent. And then getting into tougher tasks, it still does a really, really good job. Now, one thing that we found that was really kind of weird with these systems is that if you're maxing out the CPU, well, it actually doesn't stay at 100% the whole chip starts down clocking and you're roughly at 75% CPU usage maxed out. And that is just because of the wattage that they preset these at, um, also because they don't want them to get loud. And we do have 12 performance cores, which is weird because uh, the Macs have four performance cores and four efficiency. Um, Intel's chips that are gonna come out end of this year also do the same. But because these are all performance cores, you need to run a lot of power to them. But in this case, it seems like they're just down clocked or under voltage, voltage uh, chips, but the whole thing is working out. Now, as far as the CPU, it does a really good job, even in programs where they're not yet optimized or recoded for ARM, it still did a good job in terms of performance. And then ones that are, well, it beats out Apple's M3. So overall performance is very impressive in terms of the CPU. Now, where we run into some issues is the actual graphics performance because the graphics that's built into this, well, it's basically the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 graphics, just a little overclocked compared to a phone that doesn't have fan cooling. So it's actually quite old in this brand new system. So if you're doing tasks that need a lot of graphics, well, the performance really, really drops. The same thing goes for the encoders that are built in. So if you're doing video editing, you're exporting, the speed is not great compared to Apple systems. Even the M1 ends up beating it out in DaVinci Resolve 19, even though that's one of the programs that is designed for ARM and just got released. Um, so it's just limited by those encoders um, compared to Apple, which is better even years ago. Uh, but on the plus side, compared to the Intel version that came out this year, it still beat that out. So it depends what you're trying to compare to. Uh, but our main consensus is if you're buying this system for web use, web applications, watching videos, CPU use, good battery life, it is excellent if you need to have a Windows system. But if you need good graphics performance, that is where you do not wanna pick up one of these systems because even Intel is actually more powerful. I do wanna point out that as time goes, more programs will get optimized. So the nice thing is performance should get better if you're using applications that are not optimized, but even now it's still working pretty well. So that's just one thing that you should note. Now, if you wanna buy one of these laptops, the rec my recommendation for you guys would be to look at the version with the uh, X Plus chip. You can buy one for 999 bucks with 256 gigabytes and on the plus side you still get 16 gigs of ram as base apple please take note of this that is awesome that they're doing that compared to apple and the cool thing is even though you get 256 for 9.99 for 80 bucks you can pick up that one terabyte and swap it out yourself which you can't do on a Mac, and then you have a killer value. So if you don't need all this CPU performance, well, you can save yourself some a good amount of money and you'll get even better battery life because you have less cores and they run slightly slower. So the battery life will be even better. So for 9.99, this is um, Windows and Snapdragons, Qualcomm's, Mac, Apple Silicon moment that we had four years ago. It's just happening right now. And you have a lot of nice upgrades as well. So out of all of the X Elite laptops, if you're picking one up, this is our current recommendation for an overall system where the whole package is really nice. I highly recommend it. I'm gonna recommend it to friends and family that need to run Windows. It is a great machine and you will not be disappointed. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys wanna see some of our comparisons, check them out right over there. Click that circle above to subscribe. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.